two, I, I believe we do have a quorum, right, Ben? So we probably can just get rolling. I'm aware yeah. that our applicant has uh, keeps early morning hours. So we can <laughs> get rolling with this. Um, I'll just go ahead and, and, and call the uh, April 27th meeting of the Cape Elizabeth Zoning Board of Appeals to order. I'm going to uh, just bear with me for a second because I've got to jump over to Matthew's proposed remarks and instructions, which I managed to misplace. So here we are. Welcome to the uh, April 27th uh, meeting of the Cape Elizabeth Zoning Board of Appeals. The meeting will come to order. This is a public proceeding and unless the board specifically votes to go into e executive session, you have the right to hear everything that is being said, to look at all the exhibits that are offered and please notify uh, the chairperson, that's me, Mike Ballancourt, if you're unable to hear or see anything. Um, I've added to this little script that uh, given the COVID times and Zoom and everything else, uh, things can from time to time get somewhat confusing, although I think we've done a pretty good job of managing that. So to the extent the applicant has any questions, uh, you know, as far as, 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 as managing that piece of the process, let us know. Uh, the board works from a prepared agenda and we'll be considering tonight's items in the following order. We'll go ahead with a, a roll call uh, to uh, ensure that we have the appropriate quorum. We will move to approve the minutes from March 23rd, uh, old business of which there is none. And then we will deal with new business, which is to hear the request of Todd Gutner, owner of the property at 40 Astor Lane uh, for a variance to construct a 150 square foot addition based on sections 19-5-4 of the zoning ordinance. Uh, and then we'll move forward with adjournment. Uh, as for new business being considered, the burden is upon the applicant to demonstrate compliance with the provisions of the applicable ordinance or ordinances after the board votes on the merits of each project application, the board will prepare a written opinion because the written opinion may substantially affect any appeal rights. And also as a matter of courtesy, the board asks that those attending the meeting with regard to a specific project not leave until the board has taken the second vote adopting a written opinion. Generally speaking, appeals from adverse decisions must be filed with the superior court, except as otherwise provided by law within 45 days of this board's decision. Also to be certain that you preserve your individual right to file any such appeal, you must be certain that the board's record uh, evidences your appearance this evening and the basis for your support or opposition. Uh, remember, remember this is a public proceeding. You have the right to hear and see what is happening. All, all folks who speak will be asked to first state their name, address, and affiliation. And if there are questions, please let us know. So. Without further ado, now that I've made my way through that, get back to the meeting here. Uh, let's talk about the, the minutes from the March 23rd meeting. We've all received those in advance. We have any, any questions, suggested revisions? Chair. Yes. Move to approve the draft minutes of the March 23rd, 2021 Zoning Board of Appeals meeting. Great. Okay. So moved. Is Second. All right. Any discussion on that motion? Hearing none, all in favor. So we have, let's do the roll call. Mike Ballancourt in favor. Mike Tatum Wheeland in favor. Aaron Mosier in favor. Kevin Just in favor. Joe Barbieri in favor. Okay, good. That covers all of us. And uh, Matt Kane in favor. Thank you, Matt. And then and we should also do, I mentioned at, at the beginning, we, we didn't actually do this, but we should do the roll call. Mike Ballancourt, chair in attendance. Mike Tatum Wheeland in attendance. 
Kevin Just in attendance. attendance. Joe Barbieri in attendance. Beth King Colin. in attendance. Colin Powers in attendance. Okay, good. I think that covers it. Thank you. And then on to new business. And this is to hear the request of Todd Gutner, owner of the property at 40 Astor Lane, map U32, lot 6 47. Uh, request for a variance to construct a 150 square foot addition based on sections 19 5 4 of the, uh, of the zoning ordinance. Um, I'll turn it over to uh, our code enforcement officer, Ben McDougall, to offer us just sort of a brief summary of the application that we're considering. Sure. Uh, Mr. Gutner came to me a couple months ago uh, requesting uh, more understanding of the process to do an addition on the side of his house, understanding that he was close to that setback line. And we, uh, we discussed what would be necessary and came to the conclusion that a variance would be necessary because it'd be within 20 feet of the side setback line. This is a conforming lot in the RC zone. It was created in uh, 2014 as uh, an amendment to the Mitchell Highlands subdivision plan. And I may have had a slight miscommunication with Mr. Gutner because I'm noticing on his application, it, it asks for the setback to go down to five feet. And uh, you guys aren't legally able to approve a variance uh, less than 10. Uh, so we may want to first ask Mr. Gutner if he still wants to proceed and is able to proceed understanding that he can't be closer than 10 feet to that side property line. On, on the front page of the application, he asked for five feet, maybe to give himself a little breathing room. On another page of the application, it, uh, it shows seven feet. I, I think I glanced at the plan and, and saw the 10 on one of the site plans and, and you know, didn't look at it carefully enough. Uh, so it's also, it's also possible Mr. Gutner may need a survey. I don't know if we know exactly to the foot where his house is, but uh, that, that's probably something we should cover right off the bat if, he, if he's able to, uh, if, if he wants to see this through with this new understanding. Uh, okay, so, all right, so you're saying that whether this goes through or not, you can only approve to be as to reduce it to 10 feet. It can't be any fewer feet than 10. Is that correct? Okay. Yes. So, okay. My, my attempt is to be, uh, is to conf basically to be, um, you know, conforming with the rest of the neighbor neighborhood that I'm in, which is five feet already. So how I'm just, can you just educate me on how like that happened? Well, that somebody has five feet, but you can't go less than 10. Yeah, so the, there's, uh, the ordinance clearly states that the zoning board can't approve a variance to be closer than 10 feet to the property line. Uh, what happened in, in the Cottage Brook subdivision, that's an open space subdivision that, you know, they preserve, uh, 40% of the land of the subdivision is preserved in open space, which gives the planning board the latitude uh, to waive property sizes down significantly and waive setbacks down significantly based on uh, the fact that it's an open space subdivision. Your lot comes from the Mitchell, uh, Mitchell mm -hmm. Highlands or Mitchell Heights uh, subdivision, which is based on traditional zoning with conforming uh, conforming lots and conforming setbacks. Um, so uh, unfortunately, th there is not the latitude here tonight uh, to go down to down to five feet or seven feet. Right. And um, yeah, I mean, if, if we had a miscommunication <laughs> on that, and you, uh, and you want to walk, I'll apologize and give you <laughs> <your money> back. <laughs> 
No, it's all good. I mean, I, you know, everybody, you know, has oversights and et cetera. It's not a big, it's not a huge deal. Um, you know, thanks for all of your time this evening. I appreciate it. I know several of you, it's good to see you and hope things are going well with all of you. But um, I, I mean, I get, I mean, if I went down to, I'm just trying to think right here, this is where it is. So is there a route that I could even get it to five or is that off the table completely? Well, it, it, it's off the table tonight. Um, you know, I, I got to that tonight, but I mean, is there a avenue to pursue to even get it to five? Well, I, I, it, I think it's somewhat far-fetched, but you could attempt to amend the Cottage Brook subdivision to become part of the Cottage Brook subdivision and try to Get in, uh, get in with with their lot sizes and setbacks. I I don't know I don't know if it's possible because you have to do all the math for open space subdivision and and, and storm water and there's there's a lot that goes into amending a modern subdivision plan. Yeah. Uh, so you'd have to you'd have to take that to the planning board and try to take your land out of the Mitchell Highlands subdivision and get it into the Cottage Brook subdivision and. And, and get those setbacks applied to your lot. I'll just jump in here and it sounds like um, from a, a procedural perspective, probably the way we should treat this is, is as a withdrawn application with, with Mr. Guttner's permission on that. And then uh, Mr. Guttner, you can go back to the drawing board have conversations with the planning board and, and with, with Ben if necessary, and then you're still free to come back before us if that makes sense because we haven't actually denied any kind of application. That's me thinking aloud. I don't know if the, if the other board members are on board with that, but I think actually, I don't know that it even matters. I think if you say, I withdraw my application, um, then I think that's what we accept. And then that way you still have all of your options open to you i mean okay uh i mean i don't i don't, I don't know what the yeah i mean this is something i gotta think about here but i mean i'm coming back to, i mean what it's it sounds like i'm already up against it when it comes to getting a setback reduced in the first place um it sounds like what Ben saying is my option to get it to five feet sounds even more crazy to me. I, I don't know that just that sounds even more, uh, you know, impossible in a way. I would, can you guys advise me on any direction or do I just have to take what you say right here and just make a decision? Like, I, we, we, we can't, uh, yeah, we can't really advise you. Uh, I, I think the have you ever what, what has anything ever been uh, presented before you guys like Ben is describing and it's ever changed? I mean, I don't even know how to state it. Uh, you know, I don't even know how to put it into words what, what he what he just said. That but wouldn't that wouldn't be before us. It wouldn't that, be. That would be yeah, before no, the, the planning the planning, the planning board. board thing wouldn't wouldn't be here. That would. Um, uh, I mean, you know, it, it, what what you'd be asking for here to move to ten feet. You know, it's it's possible um but it really becomes whether or not that's possible for you if it's if it doesn't work for you it probably doesn't make sense to go forward today if you think it might work for you it might make sense to go forward today and and yeah. consider it and kind of have that you know discussion it doesn't remove your right then to go before the planning board as well okay so that was my next question if i get denied with this tactic does that eliminate the other one too i don't believe it does no no, they're, they're very, they're separate things. And I mean, you, you'll probably get the sense of where the conversation is headed, um, you know, at some point, you know, further on, if, if you want to continue going down that route and, uh, you know, the, there aren't too many people on here, you know, we can, we can come back to you a couple of times. Um, we probably will with various questions as we, you know, go through this. Sure. Part of my just looking back, this is the wall basically yeah. that I'm thinking about or hoping to go out on it. I'm just, I mean, you know, the original plan was to go out 15 feet and keep it 10 feet wide, but I mean, it's, I could do 10 feet and 15, you know, so I, I might as well, t 
take, you know, a shot right now. And, um, and if it fails, then maybe pursue uh, what, what Ben is. Uh, so I'm not sure what we're talking, just to jump in here, I'm not sure what we're talking about. Are we, ta if we're prohibited from reducing a setback to less than 10 feet, then we can't approve this. We, 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 we yeah, I agree. We, I, I just, I so saying I need to make an adjustment on this. Yeah, app knowing that, that you, we can, we can feet. possibly grant it up to 10 feet, then, you know, not this one. Well, that, that, and that was my point in introducing yeah. this is, you know, Mr. Gutner would have to state that, you know, he would like his application pre presented as, as a variance uh, to 10 feet and no closer than that. Right. I, I would state that then. I would like to, for you to, uh, you know, look at this application 10 feet, no, no closer than that, if that is what and, and, it, and the board still has to be comfortable that With we're that. kind of amending the application on the fly here. And, um, you know, you, you could state for the record if the, the style of the addition would be the same, basically instead of being uh, 10 by 15, it would be 15 by 10. Yeah. Mr. Chair. Do you, you wanna, sorry. Michael. Yeah, I, I mean, the, the plan here that, that Todd has before us is, is crystal clear, right? It's a, it's a box on the side of the plan that, that gets within, you know, whether it's five feet or seven feet or 10 feet of the property line, it, it's very easy to understand. Um, I would be comfortable making that adjustment on the fly, you know, it, it, given the circumstances where he was, you know, may, there may have been some miscommunication with Ben and, um, you know, thought he could apply for a variance down to five or seven feet, but it's not possible. Um, I think the details on this are, at least when it comes to the request, um, are are clear enough that I'd be comfortable. I, I think maybe some of the other issues um, that we're going to talk about are, are quite complex, but um, but anyways, that, that's that's how I my take on this. And, and obviously, if board members are uncomfortable, it could be tabled in the next month. And, and Mr. Gutner could do a simple correction on the application. I view it as almost a friendly amendment. So I'm, I'm comfortable. Really, as far as I can tell, is only one change in the application that's on page one, just the proposed setback. I mean, there's some discussion um, of, a, of a five foot, but it, I don't think that's the crux of the application. I really think it's just an amendment to literally that one line on page one. Um, so I'd be okay with it. Um, Mr. Chairman, would, would there be some redesign of the structure that would matter to us? If it had to be uh, pulled back to a ten foot setback, I guess that's my question. Well, he he stated that it would be a hundred and fifty square foot box, so we're we're talking about one hundred and fifty. I, I think if you're approving a hundred and fifty square foot single story, uh, you know, gable style addition, I I, I feel like I I agree with uh, that it's relatively straightforward to go on the fly. But it's it's no longer 150 square feet, is it? Well, it'd be 10 by 15, so. It, it, yeah, it, the, it could still be 150 square feet and, and, and maybe, you know, and, and if you wanted to, maybe after design came in, it might end up being 130 or 140 for practical purposes, but I think the board could still say, you know, we're looking at 150 square foot addition, no closer than 10 feet from the property line. It, it's, it's relatively straightforward. All right, so procedurally, we think about where we are here. Um, I think we've got uh, a, a pr proposal then by the applicant to amend the application, uh, given that setback issue to no less than, I think it was 10 feet that you said, right, Ben? Yes. 
and I think as, as Kevin suggested, we can view this as a friendly amendment. Uh, I think the board should still take a, a position on, on that as to whether you know, we accept the, the amendment to the application at, at this stage in the game. It sounds like folks are generally on board with that approach. Uh, is there a motion to that effect? Colin, okay. Do we have a second? All, set. All second. All right. Discussion on the motion. Matthew. Just for clarification purposes, are we talking about um, both sides of the property would be removed, uh, lowered to a 10 foot setback or just this particular side uh, where this bump out room would be? It's a good question. I, I don't need the setback reduced on the other side. Um, it, it's literally just, it's just one side. I mean, if, if I don't know if you guys need to do it a certain way that both sides have to conform, then I can approach it that way, but it's not necessary on the other side. Uh, sorry, Mr. Gunner, is there a, um, I'll consider this uh, chair a, a question to the applicant if that's okay. Of course, of course. Um, is there a structure, the, the picture that I'm looking at, probably upside down, is the photograph, the satellite yeah. photo. Yeah. And I think this is west here, and this is east here. Uh, one more time. West, east. Uh, no, east would be the side of the of the addition. Correct. Yep, yeah, that's east. So okay. Yep. Yeah. So on this, the west side over yeah. here. Yeah. What's the distance between your house and another house? Over over here. Um, that is, if you look at if you look at this sheet here, um, that's the condominium complex. There's actually a a, a green line trail um, that's owned by the well, whomever I, I don't know Cape Elizabeth Land Trust. I don't know who owns those, but that's so, a, this one here. So there's essentially there's no structure. No, no. It's, there's a trail system that runs right on the right on my property line. Okay. Okay, um, yep. thank you, Mr. Gunner. Um, Chair, I have no issue with um, having the uniform, it makes it much easier um, that the sides is the same uh, on either side. Okay, so so just to be clear, we're, we're just considering the motion to amend the application. Michael, you, I, I saw you raise your hand, I think. Yeah, I was just gonna pipe in there and say, we, we when we, you know, typically when we view these ordinance, uh, these variance requests, we're we're reviewing a very specific um, case of a structure um, encroaching on the setback. And we're, we're, you know, it's my take that we're not amending setbacks all around this lot, Matt. We are, you know, typically we would be looking at uh, a variance for a particular structure. In this case, a in addition, a 150 square foot addition um, in relation to one property line. So, you know, that's how I, that's how I view all, all these variances. Uh, uh, thank you, Mike. Uh, just a quick question, Chair, is that, uh, um, so if we proceed, we should be clear is that the variance that we're talking about only applies to the application side. Um, there should be, I agree with Mike, if that, you know, it makes perfect sense. There's some complication uh, for future owners of the property, but that's not our problem. Um, so yeah, uh, I agree. Okay, thank you. Any further questions or comments on, on the motion to permit the amendment of the application as stated? Seeing and hearing none, uh, all in favor, Mike Ballancourt in favor. Mike Tatum Wheeland in favor. Colin Powers in favor. Aaron Moser in favor. Joe Barbieri in favor. Kevin Just in favor. Matthew Caton in favor. Okay, great. Okay, so we've we've cleared the hurdle <laughs> of, the amendment of the application. Now we get to move on on to the uh, to the merits. Uh, we heard 
Ben's presentation. Ben, I don't know if you have anything to add now based upon what we just did, or we can move on to, to hearing from, from uh, Mr. Mr. Gutner. I think we can move forward. All right. I, I haven't received any communications from anyone else regarding this application. Okay. Mr. Gutner, I, I know you, you, you said a, a, a little bit of your piece, but uh, we want to give you an opportunity certainly to be heard. So if there are sure. you know, other points that you want to make to us, uh, we've of course, seen your application, but, but feel free to speak up. No, thanks. Um, and thanks for letting it move forward. I mean, you know, in the conversations that I've had with Ben, you know, this is a tough one um, and understood. Um, so, you know, just to find out whether it's even an option for me or not, and you know, to expedite the process uh, is appreciated. So we don't have to. So I don't have to do this. You know, a month from now and redo all these. You know, it's it it is. It took a lot of work to put all this. You know, nine applications together and everything. And I get it. It's COVID times. So, um, but thanks for letting it go through. Um, I mean, basically, um, in general, you know. Um, it became apparent to us that, you know, because of COVID and all the kids being home and my wife's a teacher and she's home and, you know, we, we just, we kind of need a little more space on the, on the first floor. I mean, it's, it's just, it, it it's what we, what we need. And, um, you know, talking with my neighbor, Eric Hills, who, um, you know, basically split his property in half and that's how I got the lot. Um, he was, um, totally in favor of me pursuing something like this. You know, I had good conversations with him about it. So um, he, you know, gave me his blessing and, um, you know, it's kind of the, the option that I was hoping to, to go down. Um, it, if you look at my house and where it's located and how you access it and how it looks and basically everything about it, um, it really is part of, the Cottage Brook sub, um, um, sub development or whatever is, is that what it's termed? I don't know what it's, how you term it, but um, this, the Cottage Brook neighborhood, um, you know, I, I understand that it, that it was split off of Eric's property on the Mitchell side and kind of has to, um, I, I guess back when it, when it was developed and it has to conform to those laws over there. Um, but I can't even get to that neighborhood without driving two miles around that way or two miles around that way. And my house looks nothing like it. Um, and everything is here. So I'm just trying to, you know, be, uh, you know, more on the same playing field um, and as the rest of the homes that are, you know, across the street from me, my neighbors all the way down this whole development. Um, you know, just looking at the numbers when I was doing the research on this, it, it really, is apparent that, you know, my first floor square footage um, compared to my setbacks, you know, are, are, are a limiting factor. And I just kind of want to be in the middle of the pack. You know, it's on this sheet here that um, kind of spreadsheet type thing um, that shows all the square footages from the first floors for, you know, those 10 other properties, the surrounding properties. And if I were to be able to add 150 square feet, then, you know, it'd put me in the middle of the pack and more on the same kind of, you know, level field with them. So, um, you know, that's kind of the direction that um, I was hoping to go in. And, um, you know, I know that there's definitely other factors involved here and precedents involved here and things like that. So I'm open to discuss those for sure. Great, thank you. And Ben, I, I think you mentioned earlier you haven't received any additional sub submissions from members of the public, other members of the neighborhood. You haven't heard anything further. Correct. All right. And I'll I'll ask if we have any um, public participants, uh, any interested participants in the in this Zoom call, who uh, would like to offer any any comments, any thoughts on on Mr. Gutner's application. I don't see anybody here in the queue, but ask the question anyway. There is one attendee, but she doesn't, she doesn't have her hand up. All right. So I, I guess if, uh, if she wants to put her hand up, she could speak, now would be a good time. But she may just be observing the meeting. 
All right, going once, going twice. Gone, okay, that's fine. Okay. Um, hey, Michael, can I just add one more quick thing before you guys? Of course. I, just, just for comparison's sake, I mean, I, I, you know, I did, you know, that, that whole list right there. But I mean, essentially what I'm trying to do with these other two sheets here is, is what my neighbor across the street, uh, Chris Inman has, and he has a little bump out off the side and he was able to do it because of a reduced setback. And it's, you know, about, a, you know, it's 140 square feet and it, I, I kind of would be on the same level, same playing field if I did the same thing that he was able to do because of that reduced setback. So that's kind of my goal is to just kind of mimic that, that construction over there. Um, so that, I just wanted to add that real quickly. Thanks. That's fine. That's fine. Great. Thank you. Um, so at this point, you know, hearing no additional uh, public comment, we'll, we'll close the meeting to public comment. We'll move into this, the uh, stage of board consideration. We'll have a discussion as a board. Um, uh, Mr. Gutner, I'm, we may well have some additional questions for you as part of that. So uh, we'll be prepared to participate as need be. Uh, and we can open up uh, a discussion betwixt and between the board. And I don't know who wants to lead off, but uh, let's have at it. No. Mr. Chairman, I, I have a question. I think it's probably best directed to, to, to Ben. Um, uh, it looks like, um, I, 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 I kind of see this, I suppose, as kind of a, a, a de facto amendment to the, the Cottage Brook subdivision map. Um, and I'm not sure where that leaves us, but putting that concern aside, when, when um, this lot was created, it looked like the, the town imposed a, a, um, a open space impact fee for 6,000 plus on when this lot was created. Had this lot been created as part of the Cottage Brook subdivision, what would have been um, the obligation of the developer to provide additional fees for adding this one lot in. I don't know the answer to that. What uh, can I have? Can I ask a question on that? Is that possible or no? You can. You can. You can go for it. Um, okay. Uh, at, at the same time, I would say that you know, you know, I, and I understand the thrust of, of Joe's question, um, but it, it doesn't really fall on sort of the, the sphere or, or uh, spectrum of our consideration for this. Okay. Um, but uh, Mr. Gutner, if you had any you know, question or comment on that, feel free to feel free. I, I was just curious, like if, if there were a lot in the Mitchell neighborhood would there also be an impact fee to bring that lot, you know, to the table? I mean, because if I if I am the only, if I'm if there's not an impact fee, is is there an, would there be an impact fee for, for a lot over there? Yeah, I I, I I don't know, and 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 again, you know, we we can go down into this impact fee rabbit hole, yeah, I suppose, sure. but I I just. I don't think it's going to be worth worth well, a while to do it. You know, I, I think I think where we're at is, you know, we're considering the variance request. Of course, that's the that's we've got the amended application, uh, and then the question is, do we feel like those criteria are met? And if so, how? And if we don't, then it then it puts Mr. Gutner back into the weeds with potentially looking at, you know, planning. Board uh, amendment of of, of uh, some of those subdivisions. Um, I th so I, I feel like just to boil it down to brass tacks. I think we're talking impact fees. That's more a conversation I think for the planning board and 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 not so much for us is my feeling. But again, the board can talk about we can talk about whatever we want. Um, Mr. Chair, just to clarify, I wasn't trying to send this down to an academic discussion. I'm trying to see that if we were to approve this, which would make this in effect part of this other subdivision, whether that would in effect allow a runaround around the original approval, which placed 
the applicant in the uh, the Mitchell subdivision. So uh, if there was would have been some different requirements imposed on on this lot had it been created as part of the subdivision, which now Mr. Guttner really wants to be a part of, then it seems like that would go directly to the intent of of the town in in creating um, this ordinance and creating subdivision. Anyway, I, that's fine. I don't have any more questions. About it. Kevin. So, so I've got a couple of questions and, and I think I know the answer to many of these, but I, I, they'll sort of inform some later thoughts. So if, if you wouldn't mind bearing with me. Um, Mr. Gunner, when, so it looks like you purchased either the house in 2015 or the land in, in early 2015. Does that sound about right? Yeah, we got back in 2014. Uh, yes, it was, yes. Uh, like, yeah, right around the holidays in January 2014, 2015, somewhere in that, yeah, I want to say January of 2015. And and Ben, this one's more for you, but it looks to me like the Cottage Brook subdivision, um, and, and I went down this rabbit hole on the town website, wasn't actually, well, it looks like it's been amended multiple times, but it looks kind of like the, the last major amendment was in the middle of 2015, which would have been after the purchase of this property. And, and I guess where I'm going with this is it, it would have been probably uh, impossible to unlikely to have actually added it to that subdivision at the time. Um, but I'm, I'm trying to get a handle of when that subdivision was actually finally approved. Well, sub subdivisions often get minor amendments to them as, as development is occurring if, you know, sewer manholes have to move or there, there can be minor things that happen that cause the latest amendment to the subdivision to be 2015. But the, uh, the nuts and bolts of the Cottage Brook subdivision were approved several years prior. And I, I don't have the information on what exactly the 2015 amendment was. Uh, okay. I mean, it looks like there have been a few. There's I've been even one as recent as 2019, but I don't think that really impacts this property. Um, all right. So th those are really the questions I had for now. I've got some additional thoughts on this when we get into kind of discussion, but I want, I'd like to get everybody else's questions on the table before uh, we totally nerd out on the, uh, the main stack shoots and definitions of practical difficulty. And, and I, I, I this will be a little bit of a long one, so just apologize in advance. Other other questions input at this point from from the board. Michael. Yeah, I'll I'll jump in, and I you know. I like to, I like to, I'm, I'm a pretty straightforward person. I like to just go through the standards we were, we're tasked at looking at. And when I do that, you know, we're, we're in section 19-5-2, section B. <clears throat> and um, again, I'd like to leave the practical difficulty standard to the end, because I think that's almost always the crux. Um, but when we look at some of the other standards um, or the conditions that need to exist, um, mm -hmm. I think certainly there's a case to be made that the need for the variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property and not the general conditions of the neighborhood. I think this uh, probably meets that condition better than any, <laughs> any variance request that I can remember. Um, it won't produ produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood. Um, I, you know, I, I think it would be, I think that's reasonable to say. I don't think uh, the proposed change would, would have any uh, undesirable change. In fact, it would, you know, match many of the other homes in the neighborhood, like, like the applicant said. Um, the practical difficulty is not the result of action taken by the applicant or a prior owner. Um, you know, that's, that's always a tough one as well, but um, I think there's an argument to be made that, that it's just sort of the condition of what it is. Um, no feasible alternative uh, is available to the petitioner. 
um, we've we've kicked some around and um, we, we we haven't come up with a feasible alternative. <laughs> um, it's not going to uh, unreasonably adversely affect the natural environment. Uh, you know, I think we heard that it would go the the, the uh, addition would would extend into a lawn area. So um, you know, I. I in my mind, that's not an unreasonable adverse effect to the natural environment. Um, and it's not located in the shoreland area. So I, you know, I think there are pretty strong cases to be made that this application meets all those conditions. Um, back to the practical difficulty condition. Um, I, I think that's always a difficult one. Um, I, I guess I'd like to, I'd like to hear um, maybe the opinion of of some of the other board members on that, um, but I, you know, I, I, I like to tick off, check off the easy ones um, to start with, I guess. Sorry, I, I realized I was muted. I, I said thank you for setting the table on that. That was good, a good framing, I think, of the of the relevant issues. Um, And, and and I'll just I'll I'll jump in here. Um, yeah, the uh, I mean the, the the practical difficulty standard is always the 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 tough one on these. Um, there's obviously a hard time concluding that there's that significant economic injury would result based on any denial of the application. Um, but that's me sort of, you know, thinking aloud at this, at this very moment, I'm not, not completely married to that position necessarily. Um, but that is the a, a difficult prong of this analysis for sure. Kevin. Mr. Chair. I, I was just going to say, um, you know, the significant economic injury, I, I spent a little bit of time, you know, looking at this and, and both the way it's defined in our application, um, actually, especially the way it's defined as in our application, defined as placing the applicant for a variance at a disadvantage in the neighborhood by applying zoning ordinance standards, which would prevent the applicant from having a structure or accessory structure comparable in size, location, and number to those of other lot owners in the immediate neighborhood. And that's a little bit different than what's in the actual um, in 4C under the whatever main revised statutes. But the reason this one to me is is a little different than some of the ones we've seen is, you know, in, in my mind, there's, there's no question here that somebody driving through this neighborhood would look at this particular house and think, hey, this is part of the Cottagebrook neighborhood. It's the only way to access the property. Um, it looks as, as far as I can remember, I haven't been in the, the neighborhood, you know, a ton lately, but it looks like every other home in the neighborhood. The lot's a little bit of a different size than some of those other lots, but in, you know, a, a, an uninterested, uninformed uh, customer, if you would, driving through Cape Elizabeth would drive down Astor Place and not think that this particular house was any different than, or Astor Lane, sorry, it was any different than any of the other homes on Astor Lane and in no way would they ever think it's part of the, um, you know, the Kildeer neighborhood. So to me, this is one where I, I kind of come out saying, hey, the economic injury as it's defined, I'm, I'm frankly there on that. Um, and, and I'm also okay on the practical difficulty because the, the practical difficulty comes back to the very first part of this, which is, uh, basically, the the you know strict interpretation of the ordinance, um, and I'm going to paraphrase here, doesn't make any sense. And I, I think that's that's kind of what we have. You know, it it, it it looks like a cottage broke home. It acts like a cottage broke home. It, in all intents and purposes, it is a cottage broke home. So I, I'm okay with it being a cottage broke home. Oh. Mr. Chairman. 
I'm, I'm sorry, Joe. Okay. I'm <laughs> muting and unmuting myself. Go. Okay, ahead. that's fine. Yeah, I, I guess I, I'm still on the fence on this one. I, I, mean, I think well, the first the first criteria, as I you know read read our ordinances that we look at, is whether there's a substantial departure from the intent of the ordinance. And I was, pro I think I was willing just to say deny this one just on the fact basis of the fact that this was approved as specifically approved as part of this other subdivision. And like I say, there seems to be an, almost an effort to get a de facto amendment of the, of the Cottage Brook subdivision. What mitigates against me saying that, looking at, uh, Ben was kind enough to send us uh, the findings when this was approved, is that the, the, the town does say that lot 46A will functionally become part of the Cottage Brook neighborhood and we'll have access to Astor Lane. So while it was approved as part of, technically a part of this um, Columbus subdivision, the council seemed, or the town seemed to recognize, you know, that um, it was functionally gonna be part of, of, of the Cottage Brook neighborhood. So I'm not, I'm not quite sure that um, if we were to approve this, that we would be allowing a substantial, uh, departure from the intent of, of the ordinance, at least as, as to the intent of creating this lot. So then, then the second thing, and, and again, the second criteria is whether, the, again, the literal enforcement would cause a practical difficulty. Well, the practical difficulty component is divided into two parts. Um, the second part people have, have made reference to, which is that there's a significant economic injury. I, I just want to say, Parenthetically, I will, of course, vote based on the way the significant economic injury prong is is written. But that makes I have, have to say that that, that prong makes no sense to me. The fact that you don't have what your neighbors have somehow necessarily creates an economic injury to you. It's just I don't understand why we why that or why the ordinance is written that way. But you know, I take it as it's as it's written. Um, but the other component of the practical difficulties standard says that, that strict application precludes use. Um, I should quote the language. Strict application of the ordinance precludes the ability of the property owner to pursue a use permitted in the in the zoning district in which the pro property is located. I mean, it's not precluding the use. It seems to me as the use as a house, and it's not. Precluding the use as a house, it's use, precluding some expansion to that use, but it's not it's not uh, dis, uh, disallowing the use per se. So, I'm I guess I'm I look at that fairly strictly that requirement, and I don't see how it precludes the use. So even if we can say there's significant economic injury because you know um, the other people in the adjoining neighborhood. Um, don't have to follow the setback requirement. I don't see how we get um, past the significant uh, the uh, that this is precluding use of the property. Thank you, Joe. Yeah. Other thoughts, questions? It, and I, I'm not I'm not at liberty to speak at these times, right? It, we, 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 we've always been been pretty liberal with allowing applicants to, to speak up. So, uh, you know, I don't think anybody's going to jump up and down, Mr. Gutner, if you've got something <laughs> else you want to add at this point. No, I was just um, I mean, just to piggyback there off of, off of Joe and, and what he was saying, I mean, it makes some sense to me what he's saying. Um, if I guess, though, if you 
interpret my property as truly part of the Cottage Brook subdivision, which, I mean, I don't see, how, not knowing all of the, you know, laws and bylaws and zoning and all that kind of stuff, just as a common citizen, I don't see how you can. And therefore, the next stage of that, you know, um, practical difficulty thing then becomes, well, if you do consider me as part of the Cottage Brook development, then I am being kind of um, pigeonholed there by not being able to have access to more of my land like the rest of the properties in my neighborhood do. That's, that's kind of, I guess. Okay, good, thank you. Gavin. Yep. I'm uh, sorry. I feel like I'm, I'm taking up all the air time today, but, but Joe, just have at it, it. Have at it. the, um, the practical difficulty, you know, pursuing a use permitted in the zoning district. I, to me, that, that doesn't read like you're granting variances to, you know, um, um, operate a hotel in a, a agricultural zone. I mean, I, I, I think that use is, is I, I define that I read that definition as a little bit broader meaning to pursue maybe even the use permitted in the zoning district. So, you know, a, a comparable use to the rest of what that subdivision um, use would be, which would, you know, I think include um, some dimensional standards. I mean, this is in the section about um, modifying the, the dimensional standards. So, you know, on, on one hand, the words, obviously they, they say what they say, um, on the other hand, I think that part of our charge is interpreting those words in a practical setting. And, um, you know, all of this is about the strict interpretation and how the strict interpretation doesn't of the ordinance doesn't always work in the sort of actual real life settings in front of us. Um, and, and sometimes, you know, the, the, we, we've had some situations where, you know, those make sense, you know, the, the way those variances are, are adjudicated. And I think there are times when, um, you know, there is a little bit of, you know, leeway granted to us. I mean, the whole reason for having this variance is so that it's, it's possible to do this. And if we, we could never do it because we could never get to a little bit of a, a, a definition of a practical difficulty, um, it wouldn't have made sense to even include this in the zoning ordinance. So, Again, I, I don't. I don't look at this as precedent saying let's open up the flood of um, a variance requests. You know that we get in, but this is really a little bit of a different one, just because it's one thing that the town already has said. Sort of is a little bit different than um, kind of how it appeared on paper. Chair, I have a question. Matthew, go for it. Uh, this is to um, my fellow member, uh, Joe, uh, and also to the chair, Mike. So when I look at the statute that's cited on page 59 of my ordinance, there's a reference to uh, section 4353, subsection 4 hyphen C. And so when I go to look at that particular reference, and I'm not reading anything other than uh, the 4C section, it says, quote, the term, quote, undue hardship, quote, close quote, as used in this subsection, subsection means, and when we go down to C, the granting of a variance will not alter the essential character of the locality. And essentially there's a subsection D afterwards, but my, my query to Joe and Mike uh, on this is um, I'm struggling with the qualifier of practical difficulty and how it implies, how it's supposed to be interpreted because it it seems to be used in several different sections uh, in dealing with the variance and it's a defined term on page 23 um, of my ordinance um, would you agree that the, the the statute should govern if there's a, a, um, a statutory interpretation between the ordinance and the statute That's the Joe or Mike. Are you asking us to the, the, the main the main state ordinances or state statutes? Yes. Whether that would control over the, the ordinances? 
Yes. I would, I would think it would control. I, I agree. And, and so when I read and interpret that the statute dealing with that, I think that it, it, it alleviates the pressure on my, when I'm reviewing this application and trying to slot the various parts of the practical difficulty, what we're talking about. Um, and then the, the, the specific citation uh, to subparagraph four hyphen C, um, there's a disconnect as to the ordinance, how the ordinance is using it versus what this particular statute is talking about. And so it makes me think that there's more reason, more latitude where under four hyphen C, they talk about the character of the locality. Uh, and they're not talking about the zoning areas of the town and then the various difference between the subdivisions, but the locality, which is, seems to be a broader interpretation. So I'm, I'm more inclined to be favorable to this application on my reading of the tea leaves and try to understand what practical difficulty is supposed to mean. Um, Matthew, I think that's a good point. I think that point's well taken. Uh, yeah. Um, may, may I ask a question? I, I, because I, I, when we, last month, when we had a variance question, I remember looking at the at the main statute as how it it uh, defined practical difficulty. What did it? Can you refresh me as to what it said about um, significant economic injury? Did it have did it have a different um, definition of that as well? Joe, is that to me? Yes, to, to you, Matt. Yeah. I'm just going to quickly uh, do a, a word search because I don't think they're using the same language between the ordinance and the statute. I don't, yeah, I don't think they define it in the, in the statute, but because I've got that section open. I learned my lesson after last month. I so did. just so we're clear on the statute, um, the 4C, um, there's two sections and, and does not help my argument now. Um, there's a paragraph four dealing with variances and then there's subparagraphs A through D, okay? Now, uh, that, I don't think that's what we're talking about, which means shame on me, four hyphen C is down at the bottom. Yeah, and, and there's a A through F category uh, and significant um, economic uh, injuries discussed in there. So my point here is that um, I've just shot myself in the foot here as to the particular statute that we're talking about. The four hyphen C is down at the bottom of the section and it doesn't seem to be not as overt as the uh, section above, but the point being is that the, there's a number of uh, criteria, and, and, and just for example, under B, it says, will not reduce the undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood, uh, will not un unreasonably and detrimentally affect the use of market value of the abutting properties. So that, well, that's also supports my argument earlier that it's the, the locality, not the zoning for the, for the subdivisions. My point here is that I think if you, I think the board should be focusing on the four hyphen C section um, because I think that the, re the reading that I have is slightly different than the ordinance. Um, and the, the way that uh, some paragraph B1 on page 59 of the ordinance refers to the specific statute. I can't see any of you guys right now because I'm looking at the statute. So if anybody wants to speak, go for it. Did you guys hear me or was I on mute? Yeah. You heard me. Okay. And Chair, just to clarify, 
the way I read this paragraph on uh, page 59 is that it's directing us to the specific statute. And, and then there's the second prong. Maybe this is what Joe was talking about, is that when there is a dimensional standard, there's additional criteria to be applied. And it's somewhat circular because, you know, when we move further on, you know, again, practical difficulty is listed on page 60. Mike, can I can I weigh in here a little bit? Oh, have at it. Yeah, I'm still looking yeah. at the statute. Go for it. So he, here's how I here's how I see this. Um, you know the the conditions A through F, which I went through earlier, um, need need to be met. So you know I think if you know I sort of gave my opinion, you, you uh, other board members will have their own on on those. The only thing I see um, coming into play in the statute, um, and maybe I'm wrong, correct me if I'm wrong here, is we're, we are to be looking to the statute only for the definition of practical difficulty, which, which the statute says uh, practical difficulty means that the strict application of the ordinance to the property precludes the ability of the petitioner to pursue a use permitted in the zoning district in which the property is located and results in significant economic injury to the petitioner. And I know Je Joe went through that. Th these are the, sort of the two prongs of this practical difficulty. Can you pursue uh, pursue a y this permitted use, which clearly this is a permitted use in the zone? Can Todd pursue that use um, without granting of the variance? Um, and, and then the other prong of that is um, if, uh, if we were to uh, deny the request, would that result in significant economic injury? And you know, I think like Kevin said, I, I don't think ec significant economic injury is defined in the statute, but it, it, in fact, it is defined in our, um, in our ordinance, which is kind of strange to me, um, how it's not defined in, in the statute, but it is in the ordinance. And I think Todd has, has laid out his case uh, for why um, or, or how he is suffering significant economic injury by comparing his house to the, the 10 closest houses. Because when you do go and, and look at the definition um, of significant economic injury in our ordinance, which is on page 25. 25, thank you. Uh, placing the applicant for a variance at a disadvantage in, in the neighborhood by applying zoning ordinance standards, which would prevent the applicant from having a structure or accessory structure comparable in size, location, and number to those of other lot owners in the immediate neighborhood, but in no case fewer than 10 of the nearest property owners. So Todd's made that case. And, and again, sorry, Joe, for I, I know you, you made this point, I think, yes, 10 minutes ago. So you know, I, I think for us, I, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to sort of help other board members here and myself as I talk through this, understand what what the important pieces are here. And to me, I, I think we should be focusing on, do we agree with the applicant that he's suffering significant economic injury uh, as defined in our ordinance? So is he at a disadvantage compared to the 10, 10 nearest houses to him? Well, he's, he's made the case that he, that he is. So, you know, you either agree with that or you don't. Um, and then, the, you know, the other, back to the, the definition of practical difficulty um, and, and the, the part that Joe's having trouble with, um, and, I, and I'm not, um, I, don't, I don't disagree with you, Joe, um, that this precludes the ability of the petitioner to pursue a use permitted in the zoning district. And I know Kevin has made the case um, that, that this does, uh, uh, preclude the applicant's ability to pursue this use. And whether, you know, I, I think for me, I'm, I'm struggling. Does it mean that, it, so the use here obviously is residential use. If we were to, to deny this, does it prevent him from pursuing a residential use? I mean, 
part of me says, no, of course not, because the residential use already exists. So it's not preventing him from, from pursuing that. But, but, I, but I also see an argument for, uh, for expansion of that, existing, uh, of that permitted use, right? So are we, are we does strict application um, preclude him from, from pursuing this use? I mean, it, it's precluding him from pursuing an expansion of this use, certainly. Um, and and I'm, I'm, I'm sort of struggling uh, there with, with which, way to, which way to fall on that. Uh, as we've talked through this now, as I've heard everyone else's opinion, I'm convinced um, that the application meets uh, the conditions A through F in our ordinance, which I read at the beginning of the meeting. And I, I also um, agree with, with the applicant's analysis of, of the 10 closest uh, or 10 of his neighbors. Uh, he's got a smaller square footage and Joe, I, I agree with you. I think it's a bizarre way to define um, economic injury, um, but that's how our ordinance defines it. And, and, I, and I, I tend to agree with, um, with Todd's analysis there. He's, <laughs> his house is, is square footage. The first floor is smaller than the 10 closest. Why? Because his setbacks are bigger. Um, so, you know, to me, it, it, it's coming down to this half, you know, half of the practical difficulty definition, whether or not this precludes his ability to pursue the use. And I, Kevin, I, I'm hoping you can maybe help me out here. I think you're on, you're on mute. I, we can't hear you right now, Kevin. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Ah, that, that would be helpful. So, um, so Mike, here's what I'd say. I, I think you summed it up perfectly. I would add the words that are in here on practical difficulty to pursue a use permitted in the zoning district in which the property is located. And, and I think that's where, where I get to this, where, where by all intents and purposes, this property is located in a different place than the zoning district in which this lot was originally um, um, carved off of the other lot. And if it had any access off of Kildeer, maybe I'd feel differently if it had double access. There's a gate there that, that is closed. And I, in getting to that neighborhood, have done the two miles in, in each direction before. And neither one is faster as far as I can tell. So I, I look at this and I say, you know, the strict application of the ordinance precludes the ability of the petitioner to pursue a use permitted in the zoning district in which the property is located. He has a 20 foot setback in a, in a district that has five foot setbacks and that is precluding him from creating uh, it, it, the addition that he wants to create that is otherwise within that area. And that's how I square that circle. Is it, is it perfect? No, is it, is it trying to kind of, uh, I think, you know, come to a just conclusion based on um, you know, the ordinance and based on our charge and based on, on the words here. Yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd say it, it's a little bit of that. And I certainly respect that other folks may not come to that same conclusion, but like you, and I just would throw this in the record for me, A through F, I, um, I'm, I'm, I'm good with, with it meeting all of those. And to me, it's really just that half a practical difficulty and that's how I get over it. Um, nope. just a short comment. Yeah, I, I appreciate Michael's um, uh, explanation of, of the, the dilemma that we have in looking at this, um, at, at this, at the wording of this ordinance, which is something we're going to be doing, you know, in the future, I'm sure. So uh, I don't know if we resolve this. And I guess part of my problem, though, is that, I mean, technically, this is not part of the, of the, um, Cottage Brook subdivision. I mean, so we, we are making kind of a, a leap to say, well, he's being deprived of what other people in his subdivision have. The people in his in his subdivision are subject to this broader setback. And so we're kind of, that's why I say this is a de facto amendment of that subdivision by placing him in this, by treating him as a, in effect, a member of the Esther uh, or the uh, Cottage Brook subdivision. So if, if he was part of the Cottage Brook subdivision, it'd be a no brainer that in my mind that he should be entitled to the, um, to the variance. But since he's 
you know, he's technically in this group with all these other people. I'm a lot, I have a lot harder uh, problem with it. Um, and, and I do agree with Michael. I mean, you know, about the significant economic injury, that's not how I, at least I personally would not define it that way. The town defines it that way. And he does, I do see that he's meet, met the requirement on first showing significant economic injury. So, uh, I just, I guess, just to conclude the sentence, maybe it's just a question of whether you, if you look at him as functionally a member of the Cottage Brooks subdivision, then, you know, he is being treated like everybody else. If you want to look at him as technically as part of the this other subdivision, the Columbus subdivision or the Mitchell subdivision, which is how he was approved, then um, he really is not being deprived of anything, so. Joe, I, I, I agree with, uh, with, with your entire analysis and the questions you're asking, and I'm, I'm uh, struggling with the same questions myself. It's a, a, a thorny legal standard, particularly when you wrap in uh, the town's uh, definition of significant economic injury, which I have to agree based on that language. I think the uh, Mr. Gutner uh, meets that criteria. Um, yeah, I'm going to call this a, uh, I'm going to say that this is just barely in the strike zone and I'm just going to go out on a limb and and uh, move to approve the request of Todd Gutner, co-owner of the property at 40 Astor Lane, map, map U32, lot 647, for a variance to construct an addition on the side of the house pursuant to the amended application that we approved earlier. Aaron, I saw your hand first, but you're on mute. I'll second. Colin, did I see your hand as well? Yeah, I was just gonna second. Okay. Gonna second to the second. Okay. Uh, okay, so we've, we've got the motion, uh, we've got the second uh, discussion on the motion. I know we've, we've had a lot of discussion, but uh, any, any further discussion on the pending motion? All right. Uh, Hearing none, let's do a, a voice roll call. All in favor of the uh, motion to approve, Mike Ballancourt. Aaron Mosier. Colin Powers. Mike Tadamoulin. Kevin Just. Uh, Joe Barbirial, I'm going to abstain on this one, if that's, if that's an option. <laughs> it is indeed. Okay. Uh, Matt Cain uh, in support of the application. All right, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six in favor. We've got one abstention. Does that count sound right? All right. So the motion carries. Uh, Mr. Gutner, congratulations. It's a close call here. Um, and you still, you still have, and, and we're going to go through some findings of fact. We'd like you to stick around to listen to that. I try to make that process relatively quick. Um, but just be mindful, of course, that, that this is an approval of the amended application. So you'll still have to work with Ben to make sure that, the, you know, that those particular dimensional requirements are met. Um, one thing I, I probably should have mentioned earlier, uh, I'll throw it out there now, Ben. I don't know what the town's policy is with, with respect to surveys when we're playing games of inches, because um, this is a relatively tight fit, but that's, that, that's your gig, my friend. Uh, uh, and it, I don't think you need our input on that one way or the other. Um, and I'll leave that to the, to the discretion of, of town staff to, to look at that as to whether that's required or not. Um, uh, so all that being said, the, the uh, motion to approve did carry. Let's run through uh, findings of fact. Proposed finding of fact one, Todd and Rachel. Mr. Chair, one, what, one, one quick question. The do we are the findings of fact conditions to approval? Do we need to make any other conditions to approval um, as part of this, or does the application speak for itself? We don't do a lot of variances, so I want to make sure. 
Yeah. We, uh, I would I would just like you to add either a finding or a condition that states you're approving a 150 up to 150 square foot uh, single story addition, no closer than 10 feet to the property line. Thanks, Ben. That, that's where, where I was getting with that. And I would just um, uh, draw Mr. Gutner's attention also that the variance has to be recorded. Um, so you're going to want to make sure you do that. Um, but you, you can work and that has to be done within 90 days. So just work with Ben work on with that. Ben. Got it. Okay. Thank, thank you all very much for, for hearing all this and um, for the consideration. Um, very excited. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. We'll, we'll run through the um, through the findings uh, quickly. Proposed mm -hmm. finding of fact one, Todd and Rachel Gutner are the owners of the property. Proposed finding of fact two, the subject lot is a uh, conforming lot in the RC zone. Proposed finding of fact three, the applicant purchased the lot and constructed the existing house in 2015. Proposed finding of fact four, the lot was approved by the planning board in 2015 as an amendment to the Mitchell Highland subdivision plan. Proposed finding of fact five is a conforming lot. The setbacks are 20 feet on the front side and rear of the lot. Proposed finding of fact six, no part of the property is located in the Shoreland Overlay District. We'll get to the proposed additional findings, but uh, I'd like to entertain a motion to approve um, the uh, those proposed findings of fact, and then we'll move to the additional findings. So moved. Great. Do we have a second? Second. Kevin seconds. Second. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none. All in favor of the proposed findings of fact, Mike Ballacourt in favor. Mike Tatum Wheeland in favor. Aaron Mosher in favor. Kevin Just in favor. Joe Barbieri in favor. Colin Powers in favor. Beth Kane in favor. All right. I think that's all of us. Proposed additional findings of fact. Proposed additional finding of fact one. The need for a variance is due to, to the unique circumstances of the property and not to the general conditions of the neighborhood. Proposed additional finding two, the grant of a variance will not alter the essential character of the neighborhood. Proposed, proposed additional finding of fact three, practical difficulty is not the result of action taken by the applicant or prior owner. Proposed additional finding of fact four, no other feasible alternative to a variance is available to the peti petitioner. Proposed additional finding of fact Five, the approval is the, the uh, applicant application approval is strictly limited to a 150 square foot uh, addition, no closer than 10 feet to the property line. Any additional uh, additional thoughts, additional proposed findings? We can entertain a motion. So move that we accept those proposed additional findings of fact. We have a second. Second. Thank you. All in favor, uh, Mike Ballancourt in favor. Mike Tadema Wheeland in favor. Joe Kevin Just in favor. Joe Barbieri in favor. Aaron Mosher in favor. Colin Powers in favor. Beth Kane in favor. Wonderful, Mr. Gutner. We will let you uh, um, get off the Mr. Chair. On, on to tomorrow's weather forecast. Kevin, you had something to say. There is a conclusion section in this also. Do we need to do that? Uh oh, all right. Let's make sure I've done my homework here. <laughs> good thing the weather pattern. We don't, we don't do a lot of these, Todd, sorry. <laughs> no, it's all good, it's all good. I gotta be honest, I, I am shocked at how stressful your positions must be like that. I mean, going through the wording of everything that you guys had to do, I, I don't, that's amazing. So uh, I, I don't, we'll, I don't we'll, we'll, what you guys are doing. We all sleep relatively well, I think, at night. The pay isn't <laughs> good, but, you know, we'll work, we work with it. But uh, Kevin, to your point, you're right. There's a conclusion section. Let's nail that. Make sure we put this to bed correctly. Uh, proposed conclusion one, there is no substantial departure from the intent of the ordinance and a literal enforcement of the ordinance would cause a practical difficulty as defined by 30A MRSA section 4353, our favorite subsection 4-C. I move we accept that conclusion. Okay. 
Do we have a second? Okay. Michael, gotcha. Mike Ballancourt in favor? Mike Tatum Whelan in favor. Kevin Just in favor. Aaron Mosher. Joe Barbieri in favor. Matt Kane in favor. Owen Powers in favor. Okay, good. Thank you all. Now, I, I think that actually completes everything for us. So, um, Mr. Gutner, thanks for coming forward with this. It was a, you know, it was a tight application. It's a different, difficult standard, but um, happy we're able, we were able to work with you on this. Uh, you'll be able to work further with, with Ben. As you know, he's an ex excellent resource. And uh, hey, good luck with it. Good luck with the construction. Thank you guys very much. Have a good night. Thank, Thank you. you guys too. And then as far as our uh, agenda goes from here, I think that's, we don't have any communications uh, unless somebody has uh, something to add. Nope. Nope. All right. I move to adjourn. I, I'm not even going to entertain a okay. second or a vote on that. <laughs> let's, let's just do it. Thank you all. Thanks, guys. It's a tough Thanks. one. Glad we got it worked through. Thanks, everybody. Have a good night. Good night.